Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and very good morning. For, for this class, I'm going to continue the research methodology lectures by dealing with the quality of journals and conference articles. This is important because we need to discuss the quality of journal and conference articles to ensure that we use good quality and credible articles when we develop our problem statement, literature review, and also methodology. When we are developing the problem statement, we definitely require good quality articles, which are mainly taken from journals and also conference papers. Uh, we also need to do literature review to review, review uh, the whole uh, subject or the topic that we are doing and also we will develop methodology based on partly on uh, the literature so you must make sure that our literature is really credible is something depend dependable that uh, can, we can be used for the basis for our work uh, in fact poor quality reference may lead to poorly defined problem or even undermine the whole methodology and results. I've seen thesis submitted and examined but we found that the method used was based on dubious conference papers. Most probably the papers were not reviewed properly and uh, because of that, even the formula that they use are wrong. And imagine that we, we found that only during the examination viva stage. So in addition, later, once researchers have already done some work and ready to publish their own work, then they need to know where best to publish this work. So we must make sure that the journal and conferences which we are publishing in should be credible as well. Okay, to start with, uh, I start with this diagram showing the knowledge where we said that, okay, that's a, that blue, this blue, uh, well, not, not blue, yeah. This turquoise uh, circle is, we say that this is where, this is what human knowledge is, and it is, is a repository somewhere. So it is kept somewhere. Whereas outside that circle is, uh, we call it God's knowledge, things that we have not known yet. So what we are doing during our research, basically, we are expanding this uh, turquoise colored circle bigger and bigger and bigger so that's what we call the expanding the boundary of human knowledge which is what researchers do okay in this case the knowledge that human has gathered so far will be kept somewhere it'll be in books maybe in the journal articles maybe in newspapers maybe in magazines maybe in digital media maybe in television uh, films maybe in the so a various various kind of uh, form by which this human knowledge uh, are kept yeah so so I, I i tend to divide this into two basically so you can say that part of this human knowledge is actually kept in non-digital form in fact in the old days before the event of the um, computers and ict uh, revolution basically most of well all of the the knowledge are non-digital although they may be published as books and magazines newspapers and so on they are not but they are not in digital format so uh, there are many old books from even in many many hundred years ago you know they have already published book, books and these books uh, including even thousands years ago from the civilizations, old old civilizations of Egypt, India, uh, even Muslim civilizations, and so on. They, 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 there are non-digital publications, 
or and also uh, knowledge being kept somewhere yeah, in in various forms and there are also some which are not even published for example oral tradition so even now even now we can we can see this you know uh, that some oral tradition of the the people in the rural areas the aborigin aboriginal people and so on they they have a lot of this uh, oral tradition uh, knowledge about the the the, the forest about the jungle about the the medicinal properties of uh, plants and so on all these are called as a uh, oral tradition which are knowledge of men of humankind but they are not published so so and these are considered as non-digital so you may meet somebody who is uh, a very experienced person who has tacit knowledge on certain things and also this tacit knowledge of an expert is also not published so we can see that there is non-digital part and of course there will be the digital part and now even the digital part are also encroaching into the non-digital uh, area because many of the the non-digital forms of uh, publications are now being digitalized so even we can read now manuscripts of old yeah, from uh, in the museum and so on these are all now being digitalized so uh, the, the the realm of non-digital knowledge is slowly decreasing but definitely it's not going to go away it will still be there yeah because uh, as i said like tacit knowledge or knowledge uh, through experience and oral tradition and so on will still be there but um, most of the published works are already on uh, in digital so even in digital format not all are accessible to us some are so we just take the digital part some are access, uh, of course kept in the internet so somehow it is connected to us via our mobile devices or computers and so on so these are the digital internet realm of knowledge and uh, for all intent purpose google or the uncle google that people normally call it uh, normally knows about this normally knows about all this uh, digital knowledge but there are also other knowledge that's not that's beyond google that's beyond the internet there is a, a way for example sorry uh, the digital materials not the internet for example somebody uh, like you or myself we capture uh, photos or we take videos and uh, we uh, we do not necessarily con connect that to the internet if we put that on somewhere on facebook or on instagram and so on of course that become a digital material that is connected to google or to the internet but if it is remain on our computer or remain on our camera or remain on our mobile phones then these are digital materials that's not on the internet and there are many other forms for example maybe some filmmaking people they are making doing things and so on so there there's many uh, there are a lot of digital materials that's not on, not not in the internet okay of course there are also the the dark web which is the the web that is on the internet but is beyond the normal search engines like google uh, bing and uh, the rest so which is not accessible to normal people like us people need to have special software special kind of expertise and so on to go into the dark web and uh, it is said that this dark web contains more material actually than what is already available on the, accessible to to us now so so we, we leave that because that's beyond us yeah so if we go back to our the, the realm of the internet or google uh, out of the knowledge that is available to on the internet we can divide that into the non scholarly work and the scholarly work so the scholarly work will be like things which are accessible by google scholar to make things, things easy so you if you search on google scholar it'll come up with something different than the, the just normal internet google so you go to google for example you search solar heating for example then you are going to you're going to get lots of things about solar heating you have a uh, wikipedia you have solar heating companies you have 
uh, some blocks of people uh, enthusiasts on solar heating some uh, people sharing about their experience something about the that on the facebook and so on it will it will appear on a search engine so but those are not scholarly materials of course the scholarly material will also appear but it, you are going to get it get lost somewhere you know in in, in between the the uh, so much knowledge that's uh, coming or the information that come through google so normally what we do is we have to go to google scholar which will define the more uh, literature that's more related to research yeah related to research here you will find a lot of things like for example you have books you have thesis you have articles you have conference uh, papers you have uh, maybe patterns so all these are considered as scholarly articles so if you go to google scholar you have a lot of these digital things so some of the things we mentioned here will be standards for example research reports conference articles journal articles so we expect that in uh, as uh, researchers doing phd or mphil masters by research your most of your references will be coming from journal articles and conference articles so you definitely maybe you need to refer to some books or thesis or patents or standards or research reports or some other form of knowledge or digital not, not knowledge digital or non-digital but majority of your work will be uh, from journal articles and conference articles. So I've uh, made this, uh, call it a matrix or a table, just showing how we can classify. This is my own, actually my own understanding of how uh, we can classify the various information on Google Scholar. Okay, so these are all the information that's available on Google, on Google Scholar. Uh, then you can see that uh, I've divided here, for example, uh, first would be the index journal, and then index and flagship conference. I'll explain this a bit later. And then non index journal, reasonably good, good quality. They are not yet coming into index journal, but okay, they are close enough. Uh, close enough, good enough. Uh, low quality journals, low quality conferences and predatory journals and conferences so we see that uh, we put this like a spectrum of going to the right you have lower quality less credible so when you have an article from google scholar you must check which where it stands within this uh, spectrum is it towards the right or towards the left because some articles may come from predatory journals and conferences these conferences and predatory journals they even publish without without proper reviewing or maybe even no reviewing they just publish because they want your money that's all so we have to be careful about that so if you were to depend on your work on predatory general or conferences or low quality conferences or low quality journals then you may find problem when uh, your uh, problem statement your literature review your methodology will be questioned because of uh the, the 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 basis upon which the you 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 base the work is something that can be questionable but if you go to the left then you have a uh, more stringent uh, reviewing and referring process particularly in the index journal of web of science uh, normally people call isi isi and uh, scopus so uh, so this uh, indexing in when 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 a journal is indexed in the web of science or in scopus then there is a, a checking mechanism by this indexing uh, agencies uh, organization to check that that journal has a uh, has a proper way of doing reviewing review referencing uh, refereeing process uh, for all the articles so the journal is not just uh, taking or accepting all the papers that come in but they have a proper a proper mechanism uh, for uh, reviewing the the papers before being accepted so the uh, so the quality of the journal can be seen whether they are indexed or non indexed yeah for for, for the journal so if it is indexed they could be in web of science or in scopus so either, even within web of science and scopus they have now the, the quartile Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. 
what it means by this quartile is if a journal for example is uh, in q1 of energy and for example in scopus there are 100 100 journals uh, listed in scopus as in the field of energy if the journal is a q1 scopus of energy that means they are in the top 25 percent top 25 journals of uh, energy within scopus which is a uh, very good so similarly that in isi as well so so at least when even if you are in q4 you are still um, top uh, is the bottom 100 of scopus but still you 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 are at least indexed compared to another journal that's not indexed so of course they are, they, are, uh, they have a better quality than non-indexed journal so you see in the middle the non-indexed journal as i say it's very close to scopus but not yet scopus so we expect of course this will have some range for quality by, by itself and then uh, i have in the middle there index and flagship conference conferences so some conferences are indexed so index means the uh, again uh, it is indexed in scopus so scopus have uh, their mechanism to check and ensure that these conferences are done properly it is uh, properly reviewed the papers are properly reviewed and there is a certain kind of quality control uh, quality assurance yeah within the the public the public uh, publication of papers in these conferences so uh, normally the conferences are either published as uh, proceedings which is index or they are also published in uh, journals of uh, index by scopus so that could two ways two, two ways of looking at it yeah so it's either the conference itself published proceedings which is indexed by scopus or the papers within the conference are published in scopus or web of science journals so these are uh, this is one way of looking at it but on the other hand there is also uh, what i call as in flagship conferences flagship conferences are organized by large associations uh, which are very distinguished and uh, well established uh, organizations which uh, not necessarily they want their their proceedings to be indexed in scopus or isi because they can live on their own they can stand on their own as uh, they have quality assurance systems that is good enough to ensure the quality of the papers being accepted in the conference be presented and then be published in their published in their in their in their proceedings so these sort of conferences as well you have to be aware are good conferences you can see from the names or the organizations behind this conference organizing this conference yeah so so this this is one way of looking at it but the rest as you go to the right then you have to be careful in terms of the 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 quality of the articles and uh, if you are depending on them for your literature review for your problem formulation and so on you have to be to take them with a pinch of salt i mean you have to really check the formula that they use for example uh, and also the the way they verify or validate the methods and so on so you need to to, to, to do some kind of your own review or referencing uh, process yeah to 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 check the quality of this journal okay so similarly when you go to publish later uh, then you also have to depend on uh, something like this table as well to look into where you want to, to to publish if you want to publish easily you can go to the right it's very easy to publish in predatory and journals and conferences you just send they will just uh, do no review or simple review and they will just accept it yeah but if you go towards the left you get more quality and uh, potential of uh, getting good citations inside scopus and so on will be good so that's all for this uh, topic of uh, quality of journal and conference uh, articles and papers uh, that's all so we'll, we'll see you again we'll see you again in the next class Bye-bye.